Thank you. I really appreciate the enthusiasm that we always find here in Melbourne. And I have to say, Melbourne is one of the cities where you have one of the largest concentration of independent inventors and creative thinkers and <clears throat> powerful and dynam dynamic people. <clears throat> and I want to thank some of them right now. One of them is Ian sitting right back there. Ian is quite a hero. He's one of the main reasons we're here. Ian and Serge are heroes, and we're working on a... <clears throat> thank you, Ian and Serge, indeed. We're working on a hydrolysis project here to demonstrate the principles we're talking about, that indeed if you understand fractality, it is key to an energy technology, and that's actually the reason we're here in Melbourne, because there's so many wonderful creative inventors and powerful people here. Oh, well, we just did Subway, so. <laughs> but I'm feeling good. It's all fine. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> my name is Dan Winter. The websites are goldenmean.info, fractalfield.com, uh, theimploder.com, breakthroughtechnologies.com, so there's lots of resources here. We do have one of the world's largest private websites, goldenmean.info. We have two million hits a month, typically. We do have a global network. I've been at this, oh, too long to tell, 20, 30 years, oh my God. <laughs> but tonight's focus, <clears throat> tonight's focus is... We're going to start with what is essentially a review of what we did at the last lecture in Melbourne a couple of weeks ago, which is introduction to the science in very basic terms. What is a fractal? How, what, how do you visualize that? And how does that tell you the origin of all centripetal forces? So we'll start simple, review the science, and then we're going to explain how literally that is an invitation to understand why gravity exists, why life force exists, why perception exists. Why, why human bliss and enlightenment exist. If you understand one simple geometry, I repeat, one simple geometry, what is that one simple geometry? <clears throat> the golden ratio and how it nests in three dimensions, the stellation of the dodeca. That simple geometry, and we have somebody who's very expert at building these golden ratio structures here. Thank you, Ken. Ken, take a bow here. He, he brought all the models. If you nest... Five tetra, you have ecosa dodeca. Five cube, dodeca. Five octa, dodeca. So anytime you mutate tetra octa cube at that critical 32 degree tilt, you create the dodeca ecosa symmetry set. So there's basically only two symmetries in the universe. One is tetra octa cube, which seven axes of spin. This is the stellation of the tetra to cube octa. And you can collapse it to the tetra, but that essential symmetry set has seven arrows, seven axes of spin symmetry, tetra, <clears throat> octa, and cube octa. So that symmetry is all the same in terms of a wave function, how waves behave. Seven arrows pass through that, and that's the origin of human heart muscle, Hebrew, and <laughs> the braiding algorithm of DNA. It's all based on seven arrows. <clears throat> However, the opposite of that is that ecosa, that jitterbug, when you go from there to there, which is the origin of superconductivity in gold and DNA. And um, when you do that, that jitterbug, you create a golden ratio path through center, which is the reason superconductivity works and DNA and all kinds of other good stuff. You have another symmetry set, which is a five-based symmetry array. And that's how the cube is embedded in the dodecahedron. So you might, if you're close here, you can see the blue cube inside with the two green tetrahedron embedded in the, the cube. And then the cube is tilted at 32 degrees into the dodeca structure. The point I'm making is simply from a wave viewpoint, and waves are all we have to talk about if we happen to be physicists. <laughs> and uh, from the point of view of waves of charge or the unified field or the compressible medium or the quantum foam, whatever you want to call it, the ether, from the point of view of those waves, only two essential symmetries exist. Tetra octa cube, the center with seven arrows. And in that structure, the waves create destructive interference called the octave and isolate charge, which is why the hex is used to store and not to distribute. Whereas if you tilt that structure, tetra octa cube, into dodecaecosa, then you create the pent golden ratio structure, which creates maximum constructive wave interference and therefore charge distribution, which is the nature of life and mind and the sacred and God and the collective unconscious and fractals and phase conjugate dielectrics and all the good stuff. So 
that basic relationship is the symmetry that we're going to talk about tonight. That if you take that, the only way waves can actually gather and compress constructively. I think we'll, no, we'll start with this one. This is an animation of this structure in 3D. So we're talking about the same structure. I've stellated the, Q, the dodeca, ecosa, dodeca, ecosa, dodeca, ecosa in 3D, which is the only really possible three-dimensional fractal. I'm going to slow this animation down, something you can do in Keynote and not in PowerPoint, <laughs> hopefully. So here, see, see how there's, there could be an infinite number of, right here, there could be an infinite number of dodeca, ecosa, dodeca, ecosa, right here in the bottom right. An infinite number of these, dodeca, ecosa, right there. So that is the geometry. That is the only geometry we are going to be discussing tonight, right there. You see what that is? Dodeca, ecosa, dodeca, ecosa, forever. That is the only shape that we're going to discuss this evening. No other. And we are going to explain that that shape do you see the two pine cones kissing right there? See the two pine cones? How romantic. Two pine cones are kissing noses, aren't they? Well, that's called phase conjugation. And in physics, that has been observed to create self-organization. In optics, actually, in lasers. <clears throat> and the truth is that that geometry creates a pattern among those waves of electric charge which causes a suction to exist at center. Call it implosion which is called centripetal force. And that precise exact symmetry, which I've written a new equation for to prove that that is the reason that hydrogen exists right there. That also is the reason perception exists. It's the reason color exists. It is the reason gravity exists. It is the reason life force exists. And it is the way you create compression when you focus your attention. Did you know that when you focus your attention, you create an electric field that causes charge to compress? It's very measurable. Bill Tiller, very famous physicist. It's absolutely clear that focused human attention causes electric fields to compress. Focused human attention also reduces radioactivity measurably. In other words, focused human attention is an electric field that is centripetal. And this right there is why. That's the shape of the wave that you make. If you visualize what's happening between the hemispheres of your brain when you have a bliss experience, <laughs> that's what's happening. It's called phase conjugation. It's implosive. It creates centripetal force. Well, that's the discussion we want to have. That if you understand only that one symmetry, only that, no other shape it is need to, needs to be discussed, but if you understand that, called phase conjugation, two pine cones kissing, then you understand the cause, origin, and mechanism of, like the reason an object falls to the ground, gravity. You understand how life force happens. You understand how pine cones and chicken eggs make voltage from gravity. 